if you're a foreign individual with U.S. real estate that you own in your personal name, now is a great time to do some restructuring. Now, why would you want to do restructuring? The answer is the U.S. estate tax. So one of the things that I always find so unbelievable with a lot of foreigners is the way they go about acquiring U.S. real estate. So often, they don't seek any tax or legal advice prior to making an investment in U.S. real estate. One of the most typical situations I see is that you have a foreigner that wants to invest in real estate in the United States, whether that be a you know, vacation home or rental property or commercial real estate, whatever it is, and the first person that they go to locate is a realtor. And so then they hire this realtor, they locate the property, then they purchase the property, now they own the property, and then they start thinking about what the tax consequences of this are, and then they go out and start looking for tax and or legal advice, right? They start thinking, okay, what are the tax consequences of this? What are, what's my liability, um, you know, in case of a possible lawsuit from owning this? Absolutely no planning. And amazingly, a lot of them don't even come to this uh, conclusion that they need tax and or legal advice right off the bat, right? They come to it like a year down the road when somebody mentions to them like, hey, you may need to file a tax return or, you know, Maybe it's stupid to own real estate in your personal name. Uh, and then they're scrambling to figure out what to do. And one of the biggest problems is if you already own the real estate in your own name, a lot of times restructuring it into a more favorable structure comes with some tax consequences. I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, and, and this applies to income producing property or a second residence or whatever, any U.S real estate owned by a foreigner is subject to U.S. estate tax. And it was one of the things that people often don't think about. And the U.S. estate tax goes up to 40% of all value uh, over $60,000. So the $60,000 is the entire estate tax exclusion for foreign individuals. So let me give you an example of how this works. Let's say you own a rental or you, you own any U.S. real estate that's worth $2 million. You're a foreigner and you die. Your estate tax exclusion is $60,000. That means your estate is going to have to pay 40% U.S. estate tax on $1.94 million. You're going to probably have to sell the real estate in order to pay the tax. Now, what happens if that $2 million value is actually lower than what you paid for it, right? You're gonna to have to recognize a loss. So now you're losing money by selling this property uh, at a loss and you're paying 40% tax. It's painful. So one of the things that we always recommend or, or usually recommend to our clients, every situation is different, is don't own US real estate in your own name. Own it through a foreign company and the reason being is this, the U.S. estate tax only applies to U.S. property, okay, tangible and intangible property. So if you own real estate, that's obviously U.S. property, it's going to be subject to estate tax. Even if you put this property in a U.S. corporation, let's say for asset protection purposes, the shares of that company are also considered U.S. property for estate tax purposes. But guess what? the shares of a foreign corporation are not considered U.S. property. So if you put your U.S. property either directly in a foreign corporation, then the only thing you own are the shares in that foreign corporation, which won't be subject to U.S. estate tax, right? So then you can just give those, you know, pass those shares off to your heirs, put them in a trust, put them in a foundation, whatever you want to do with them. Um, the, the other alternative is you could put the property in a U.S. corporation, have that U.S. corporation owned by a foreign corporation, and then you own the shares to that foreign corporation, right? Um, but this is a structure that should be set up when you first acquire the real estate, right? So one of the big problems is a lot of people don't figure out that they have this estate tax issue until years after they acquired the property, and the property is already appreciated, right? Um, and then the issue is when you transfer it into this structure, it's going to cause a gain recognition event, right? So you're going to have to pay tax on the unrealized gains when you put it into this structure. So 
you know, let's assume you buy a, a, a property for, you know, $500,000, it's worth a million now, and you put it into a foreign corporation, the property's doubled in value. You have a $500,000 gain. So, you know, the long-term capital gains tax rate on that is 20%. It's a hundred grand. It's going to cost you to put it into the structure. Um, well, one of the things that I think people should really, and, and this is usually a deterrent, right? Because people don't want to have this big cash outlay right now. So they just kind of kick the can down the road thinking, you know, oh, maybe I'll sell it before I die or, or, or something like that, but not wanting to have, you know, this huge expense, a uh, huge tax expense because, you know, they failed to get advice beforehand. So now I think is a really good time to think about transferring properties into the foreign corporation, even if it does cause taxes on the unrealized gains. Why? Because real estate values are down and they're probably going to go down even more due to this whole coronavirus pandemic, right? There's a ton of uncertainty. Uh, you know, jobless claims in the U.S. have gone through the roof. Nobody knows what's going to happen, but everybody knows the economy is not going to be good for a while, right? So one thing is possible. You could have a situation, for example, uh, and I actually had a case like this where the property may have been at a gain situation six months ago, and there would have been an unrealized gain on which taxes would be levied, transferring it into the structure. But now due to this coronavirus pandemic, the property has gone down in value and it's actually a loss, right? So in this particular instance, the client didn't want to transfer the property uh, six months ago because they didn't want to pay the tax on the unrealized gains, but they're going to transfer it now because they can do it for free, right? And even if you can't do it for free, the unrealized gain that you're going to have to pay tax on is much lower now. I mean, this is probably the best time in the foreseeable future um, to go ahead and bite the bullet and pay tax on that lower unrealized gain, get it in the structure and, and save that 40% estate tax hit. Um, you know, I, I always tell people get advice before you invest in U.S. real property. You know. Uh, I mean, I know when I invest in property in other, you, you know, in, in various countries in the world, the first thing I do is I go talk to a tax guy and I go talk to a lawyer and I say, hey, yo, what are the implications of this going to be? What do I need to be wary of? Is there a structure I should be thinking about? Uh, but for some reason, you know, with United States real estate, the first people, people, the first person a foreign investor goes and seeks out is a realtor. Wrong. Go get some advice first so you set it up right from the beginning. But if you didn't, there's probably not going to be a better time uh, than now in a long time to go ahead and transfer properties, uh, U.S. properties into this foreign corporation structure for, you know, a minimal tax cost, if any. If you need help setting up this structure, figuring out what your potential tax liabilities are, that's what we at Esquire Group do. Uh, check us out online at esquiregroup.com or drop us an email at info at esquiregroup.com. Peace.